Hello and welcome. I am Fully Armed Camel and I'm here to discuss game mechanics of the up-and-coming Star Citizen and Squadron 42 video games. Having recently joined in with the more dedicated crowdfunded group, I found that many of the questions that I had regarding game mechanics and systems to be implemented within the game were difficult to track down and often only very loosely referenced. Now, I am well aware that the game is still pre-alpha and that a lot of these systems have still to be flushed out. However, I'm also sure that many people will be asking the same questions that I found myself looking for answers to. I did not need specifics, but I wanted a chance to draw some initial conclusions before jumping into the considerably large expense of purchasing ships within the Star Citizen Pledge program. As you may well be aware, gathering legitimate information from any website with as many active persons as RSI's homepage currently supports can be frustrating in the least. Scrolling through pages and pages of trolling to get to that gold nugget that you wanted can be like finding a needle in a haystack. I've also found that the development process that CIG has adopted on this project has opened the door to many speculators, which can further compound the issues. It's my hope to create a simple and straightforward point of reference for both new pledgers and citizens looking to answers for their most basic questions. As this is the introduction video, I'm going to give you a brief background on my own gaming history, as well as why I'm looking forward to Star Citizen and why I would recommend it to others. At this point, I'm sure you've realized that none of the footage you're looking at is from Star Citizen. I've taken it from a bunch of collections of different video games that I've played in the past, currently, or just things that I've enjoyed in general. And the reason is I think that Star Citizen is going to pull from a lot of different fields. It's going to pull from a lot of different aspects, and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm really looking forward to this. One of my earliest memories as a child was watching Star Trek The Next Generation, and I actually recall fondly how my entire family got together to watch the last episode of the entire series when they when it aired. And I remember the first time that I got into the Ebon Hawk when I was playing Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, and there was just this fascination, there was this amazement where I could finally, Star Wars, it was at that moment that it became real to me. It was, it was something that I could feel, something I could see, touch, and imagine. And I, I wanted more. I was looking for more. And I think that that tied in very closely once I started playing Star Wars Battlefront. There were these levels in Star Wars Battlefront, and I'll show them here in the video. There was one where it took place, I think it's Tanative 4. It took place on a spaceship. And, and I remember thinking to myself, this is really cool. Like It felt like I was actually breaching the hull of a spaceship, and I was getting to be one of those stormtroopers. I was getting to be one of the rebellions defending their, their spacecraft. In addition to that, Star Wars Battlefront had the space battles where you could fly around and you could engage and land on the craft and blow up portions of the ship. Now, I had only wished that I had had the opportunity to get those those first-person shooter levels, the expansive, you know, felt like you were in a spacecraft, and that would take and put into the space battles because the space battles were just like four rooms and it had the, the core systems all right off the hangar bay and you landed, you blew everything up. A lot of that was limited by the technology at the time, but they always left the desire to live these universes, you know, Stargate, Farscape, Battlestar Galactica, Star Trek, Star Wars, they all inspired the imagination. It was this inspiration and this drive that I had to live these science fiction universes that several years later got me playing EVE Online. Now at this point, I have about five years of EVE under my belt, and I've done everything there is to do in EVE. I've been to Nullsec, I've been in Wormholes, I've been in Highsec, I've been a Care Bearer. The majority of the time I spent as a pirate in Lowsec, and in my opinion, that's the best time that you can have. The small scale, small gang PvP, that's the most fun you can have, those little groups of tight-knit friends. And I think that even EVE, in the long term, suffers from the same issues that I, I dislike about a lot of MMOs. It's, it's a grind. You're doing the same thing, day in and day out. EVE just puts a different face on it, and I think that it lets you play it for quite a bit longer, but at the same time, you run into these issues down the road. I've already seen multiple videos cropping up on YouTube where people are saying, you know, E versus Star Citizen, and I don't think that's a legitimate comparison to make. These games are going to be completely different games. It's like comparing Age of Empires to Call of Duty. Not even, can't even do it. That being said, I think that Star Citizen has an opportunity to take the science fiction game genre beyond what EVE is capable of doing. And for me personally, that's why I'm so excited and so looking forward to EVE Online and why I would recommend it to so many other people. Either way, I hope that this gives you a little bit of a better idea as to where I'm coming from when I talk about science fiction video games, what I personally am looking forward to. Um, tune in for the next episode. We're going to be talking about ship variants and what you need to take into consideration before selecting a pledge package, as well as what the real differences are between them. 